Okay, so I created this copy layer of these trees. I'm going to clear up all the other layers in front so you can see what I'm doing. And they are on top of my full layer. And because it's a copy and I erased from it, it you can't tell at all when I add it back in. But by copying it, it allows me to do something like this. Go to Image Adjustments, and then Levels, and then maybe darken the shadows of just the copy. And you see how the... the uh, the light and like the trees in the background don't change, but everything that I made a copy of that I'm adjusting now can get a little bit more dramatic. I can even give them a little bit more highlights. So this is to layer that. Now the big impact is going to be if I play with opacity on the layer behind. You see how now those galaxies start to come through the trees. And if I need to, I can still use my soft eraser and erase away where things don't quite make sense. Like the blue between the trees here. And now that I've gotten rid of all the hard edges, I can actually take the opacity on my eraser down only after I've gotten rid of all the hard edges and start blending that a little bit better. Maybe down to like 50%. But I really like how some of those trees now look kind of ghostly sitting behind the others. So all these lingering blues I have to worry about. So that's a lot easier than trying to cut out all of the negative space in the sky to let my galaxy effects come through. I can probably turn off my sketch at this point too. And then for this other effect, I think the only thing I want is kind of the sunrise there. So I'm going to use my eraser really big. Make sure I'm on the right layer. There we go. I'm going to get, get rid of a lot of that, that arc. This is why I like using the tablet, because sometimes you have to work pretty large to get things to happen subtly. Now this is our first compositing assignment, you know, not just an exercise. And you're going to make little mistakes, and that is okay. But the one mistake I hope that no one makes is don't ever erase from your background layers. So my background layer is this galaxy. I never touch that. I just build up on top of it. I can even make a duplicate so I can take the opacity down even more and maybe play with blending modes like overlay or soft light or pin light and see how those affect and then put my trees on top of that. So yeah, I have a lot of ability that way to kind of set my forest, make it as colorful as I want. I'm going to say about there. Then I use my soft opacity, soft edged eraser to blend anything I think needs blending. So that's my background. Now I work forward. I'm happy with that. This is a big job here. Now I need to take these trees 
and make another duplicate of them and push them on top of my swamp, right? And now I want to go back to 100% opacity, soft edged eraser, and get rid of that hard edge with this swampy pool. And yet I want the tree roots and everything. So I'm just getting rid of the hard edge. I'm softening it. Want those to be a part of it. I also want to, with that 100% soft edged eraser, want to blend in that grassy background. Not deleting it entirely, but it's not the right kind of lighting or vibe, but it can help kind of soften some edges. And because I made it as a duplicate, I shouldn't have to fear erasing because I already I have the pixels if I need them. But I want to get the edge of that sulfur pool to show up a little bit between these foreground trees or these middle ground trees really that I want to showcase. So a lot of refined cutting out to layer these things together. And we start with the middle ground and background because they are more forgiving. So for instance, I can softly erase kind of this bush in front. Remember these are totally different layers. But then if I just low opacity erase from the swamp layer, it will reveal what's behind. So it's like I can kind of push the eraser in both directions. I'm at 72% opacity now because I got rid of the hard edges. Let's go to like 20% and then just really start blending this, softly transitioning. Some of these elements. Maybe getting rid of some of these elements like that tree. It's a little bit too far in the background. These ghostly trees. Yeah, when you get a tablet, just remember to put something that identifies where you took it from. So you put it back in the same place. So that soft transitioning of textures can be really helpful. It's really starting to get that swampy feeling now I'm looking for. And we're on a concept art deadline. Concept art is not super detailed. It's more about a tone and a feeling. The finished special effects of the scene will, will zoom in and kind of catch every detail, but that's not our job right now. We're trying to, to work the overall composition. There are spots that just feel too bright for the lighting. I can take that down with my opacity, my low opacity eraser, and it helps blend them together, especially as we get into the background. But still little bits of contrast are still very helpful, so I squint a lot. 
I try to find those areas. Okay, now we have these rocks. These rocks are interesting because we have kind of soft focused mid-ground, soft focused rocks, but I need to really cut these out. So if I use a soft 100% eraser, always good to use a 100% eraser. If I use it soft and I cut it out, I'm gonna lose edges on those rocks and those rocks need to feel sharper. As things come to the foreground, they should feel sharper and sharper, at least in the middle ground like these rocks. So instead, instead of going to a 100% hard eraser, I might go to like a 90%. Might make it a little bit smaller. And I can cut it out by hand like this. Finding the edge I want. And in a lot of ways, that's the most direct, the most comprehensible. You just kind of cut it out. What's great about things like rock is you can find your own shape to cut out, but you can also use your lasso. Now the problem with the lasso is that's gonna be super, super crisp. But remember, it's better to err on the side of too sharp because we can always soften later. What the computer has a hard time doing is sharpening soft edges. It has no problem softening hard edges. So I can just erase by using the lasso, finding the edge I want, sometimes even creating my own edge. I'm not sure how many of these rocks I actually want to use. Right. But I know I want the extreme foreground one to be nice and sharp. I'm putting a lot of little wiggle in my brush stroke there, or in my um, selection there. So it really feels like a detailed edge of that rock. What's nice is once you've made a selection, you can also use your arrow keys and kind of nudge it in a little bit and then keep deleting away. I have a nice crisp rock edge there. Sometimes you'll get these little remnants. And then that's where I go in with my eraser. And let's do it at a, yeah, 90, well, let's do it 85% hardness, a little bit smaller. I'm using the tablet, so it's pressure sensitive. So I can control how big that brush is for the eraser as I go in and find my edge. Having this water kind of flow. So that rock is kind of a bummer. I don't love it. So let me make my own edge just by cutting out. I want it to be fantasy, so maybe I'll make kind of a strange shape here. And delete. Then I have the ability with my eraser, soft edged, to blend in these shadows a little bit. And we're starting to merge whatever our different layers are. Find what makes sense for us. And then I have my extreme foreground layer, lots to cut out here. The foreground is where you have to be kind of the cleanest about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my lasso. I'm gonna draw along with my tablet, the edge. And do it in chunks. 